And welcome back, and we're about to move into our second segment for the morning. Then again, another one close to us, which is actually the National Committee for Families and Children, NCFC, an International Day of Family. This year, celebrating under the theme, Families and Climate Action. Focus on SDG, and I need to find out what that is, reading up on it this morning. SDG 13, actually. In with us to tell us more is Margaret Nicholas. She's the executive director mm -hmm. of NCFC. She's right there in the middle, looking dolsy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Also with us, uh, to my uh, left, is Sheena Gentle. She is uh, from the Belize Family Life Association. And uh, no stranger to us as well is Erlene Betson Gamboa, who is a member, Parenting Task Force. Guys, good morning. It's so nice to see you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, my, my first question, easy. What the SDG? <laughs> yes. Well, the SDGs are the Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. There are 17 goals that countries all over the world have signed on to, including Belize. And the goals really is by 2030, we should have in place different strategies to achieve these goals that um, they cover zero um, hunger to end poverty, looking at access to quality health, um, education, and also climate change as well, um, looking at the environment and justice. So uh, Belize has signed on to it. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times we say we sign on to a lot of things, but it's really now the responsibility of the government in collaboration with quasi-government organizations, different ministries and departments, mm -hmm. NGO community, um, the business community, as well as the wider grassroots communities yeah. um, to fulfill these goals. So we come together in different committees, different organizations have different goals that they try yeah. to meet to feed into these goals yeah. as well. So okay. the National Parenting Task Force, we really look at, um, of course, families, looking at the well-being of children and um, there are different organizations who ensure that they have the strategies that report back to the government so that we can kind of look good by yeah. 2030. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do want to say, because like the Millennium <laughs> Development Go Goals were the precursor to the Sustainable right. Development Goals, mm -hmm. right. and while we do sign on to quite a bit of commitments, mm -hmm. we actually perform fairly well in, in achieving uh, some of the targets set out by the MDGs. How are we doing in the SDG era? Well, we, we still have a, a quite bit of a way to go yeah. um, in the SDGs. We are, we're making some strides in health yeah. in terms of sanitation and water, yeah. in yeah. terms of access to quality health and education. Um, but there are some things that we're still you know, struggling with. And yeah. I think it just takes um, some time. And of course, if we're starting late, we won't see impact until maybe 10 years from now. Yeah. But okay. the, the big thing is to really make us start. Definitely. So let's shift our focus to today, to a day that I don't know many people knew was celebrated. Yeah. International Day of F Families. And quite fittingly, it falls between Mother's Day and, and Father's, Father's Day. Day. Uh, let's talk about the commemoration of this day itself and uh, the significance of families and preserving families, which is the primary mandate of the National Committee for Families That's and Children. Sure. Thank you very much, um, Marlene. And yeah, it is International Day of the Family, yeah. um, May 15th. I think all the way back in 1993, the United Nations General Assembly passed a resolution okay. mm -hmm. that in fact, 15th of May would be celebrated as International um, Day of the Family. And that is to really and truly give focus to the importance of the family. Yeah. Because we all know that the family is the cornerstone of our societies. Of course. And if we do not pay attention to our families, we're going to have some of the problems that you were discussing earlier. Mm -hmm. um, to to um, go a little bit way back, um, in 1994, actually, that was when the National Committee for Families and Children was really established yeah. in recognition of and honoring the whole celebration of International Families Day. Mm -hmm. um, International Family Day, as well as the um, the Family Service Division of the Human Development Department at the time. Yeah. And those two, the two organizations were established and the primary focus was the whole issue of reunification and preservation of the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so NCFC, which was before just a national coordinating body for children, mm -hmm. which was set up in 1992, was established then. Yeah. 
And uh, I think it was five years later that it really got its legal status through the um, Families and Children's Act, which was, of course, one of the first mandate of the NCFC 1994-1995 when it started its policy and legal reform. Mm -hmm. Because one of the first things that it did was to look at bringing a code to a Families and Children Act mm -hmm. to deal with all the matters dealing with families and children mm -hmm. yeah. and to ensure that the <coughs> Convention on the Rights of the Child was actually enshrined yeah. in the Families and Children's Act. And so when you look at the act, you will see several of the articles, like the best interests, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the, the wishes of the children, et cetera, et cetera, that all of that is enshrined actually mm -hmm. in the Families and Children's Act. Yeah. And um, since then, and we thought it was necessary to remind people that the 15th of May is celebrated as um, yeah. International Family Day. Um, and so I know that not only NCFC, but other organizations have planned yeah. some activities on this day. Yeah. Um, and really and truly, our focus as the National Parenting Task Force of the NCFC yeah. is to work very, very closely with families yeah. through our um, parenting guide. Mm -hmm. And we are especially focused on how we can really and truly bring fathers into the lives of their children. Yes. I think we have also come to the place where we on where we realize that families are not what they used to be mm -hmm. yes you know because you know we had nuclear families and that yeah. was what family was defined as yeah. yeah but we now know that there are all kinds of emerging families absolutely and yeah. we have to give attention to all families irrespective of how they are called what they are known of you yeah. know because we have the whole issue of common law unions now where that has that has legal backing yeah. Yeah. now because there is the law for um, common common law unions. We have children who are being reared um, by older siblings yeah. and by we grandparents. Have grandparents yeah. and older siblings and we also have children who are being reared in other types of families. Um, yeah. you know and so we have to ensure that no child is left behind. Yeah. Yeah. And to ensure that no child is left behind, and we have to ensure that we work with all families yeah. across this country of Belize. I, I want to take a time to, 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 to just mention this because I think we, we hear it so often. You know, statistically speaking, we have more households with both parents than we do single parents. And I know all the time people say, well, we're predominantly single parent households. It's not fact. You know, the last census, which is what we can base it on, has said that we do have a slight majority of households that do include both parents. Mm -hmm. But I hear you in saying that you want to focus a bit on fathers and their involvement. So while fathers are present, what you want is a different kind of presence as, as their parents. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you are finding in terms of why it's necessary to have this focus. Lurdy, <laughs> <laughs> Lurdy, <laughs> Because as you were saying that um, mm -hmm. in a conference we had yesterday, they shared with us that 23.5% when you look at um, the numbers in terms of families, um, fathers, sorry, being involved and playing with the children. I'll mm -hmm. use that as a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. We only have 23.5%. So even though the statistics is telling us that we do have... Um, both mothers and fathers within the home, mm -hmm. majority of the time when it comes down to the children, mm -hmm. it's mainly the mother, the mother and the child yeah. having yeah. that contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For some reason or the other, we, see, we view the males as being the providers of the home, so there's very little interaction. So what the National Parenting Task Force is trying to do is to get the fathers more involved, mm -hmm. to play a deeper role when it comes to playing with your child, talking with your child, listening with your child. And um, one of the ways that we have found that to be um, very interesting and to get our fathers involved is like we were sharing with you earlier in terms of having the the dad and I concert mm. and we did it two years back and when I when we said that automatically you said John I sing and I would <laughs> sing with it no we're looking at it in terms of a different avenue so what yeah. happens at that concert is that we get the fathers and the child or children, depending mm -hmm. on what they mm -hmm. want, they could bring all their children and they perform for us on stage. Aww. And we, we are able to give them little prize and little tokens and to basically highlight the dads. Because yeah. we must realize that fathers are there yeah. and yeah. they have several yeah. different talents and we yeah. want to be able to showcase that as well as create a bond with the child and the father. Question though, but you know, uh, this is so dear to me. Yeah, because know. she knows how I feel about my family. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, man, 
what do you why do you think though that fathers are being withdrawn even yeah. though they're in the home yeah. do you think that it's a cultural situation yeah. do you think it, it's based on machoism yeah. why do we see this I think and it comes with the gender roles that we've had established from I don't know how long ago mm -hmm. um, the stereotype that they're aggressive that they're the strong one that they're the provider they're the breadwinner which I mean those have changed but in a lot of homes the dads are also the enforcers mm -hmm. you know they're the ones they're more strict than mom oh, so <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> until they're power in your pocket home so um, I think what we're trying to do is really soften that relationship between yeah. fathers and children and have them see a different side of that, the softer side. We can yeah. play with you, we can mm -hmm. have fun with you, and um, we're, we're not just there to discipline. So yeah. I think yeah. that's the role that we're trying to now look at for that. Doesn't it when does that shift happen yeah. though? Because it's interesting. I've, I'm fascinated when I see new fathers with the babies. You've never seen a more gentler man than that. Right, that's you true. know, <laughs> when they have, they're, they're so overcome with emotion. And I do see it oh when we do our God. Father's Day special. You just yes. start talking about that moment when they held that baby mm -hmm. and their eyes full up. It's there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But where yes. do we lose it? You know, when, 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 you, when you look at it, for majority of the time, like when you look at preschool settings, mm -hmm. the dads are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You look at infant one, infant two, they're there. And then, like when they jump standard one, they start disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> eventually, so I, I think for newborns, it's the the excitement of having a newborn baby. So yeah. they're there to cuddle and so forth. But yeah. for some reason, along the line, like Sheena rightly said, we we lose it, and they more become the um, enforcers of the home yeah. mm -hmm. and the providers of the home. So we want to be able to bring that back. Yeah. But but even so, you know, while fathers would perform. I wouldn't want a dad to feel okay. I'll just play that role for the time being, no. and you know. But uh, you know, but uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, it, it, it does. It does. It does for 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 a lot of the times have them build a compassion of being a part mm -hmm. of uh, a part of the child. But you guys are out there. You guys talk to families. What are we saying to these dads so they could eventually play uh, much of a role? And what are the questions are these dads asking? I, I think John, it would have been. A good experience if you were in Ponte Gordo when we were there. Yeah. You should have been care of me. Yeah, yeah we should have been care of We'll take care of the Working one. with good. the dads, uh -huh. I mean, we worked with 15, yeah. about 15 or so fathers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole, the whole experience came out of the mix that um, was done by UNICEF. Yeah where it showed that fathers in Ponte Gorda was doing much, they were doing much better than fathers in the north. Wow. And so we, we jumped on the wagon and to find out then what Why? is it that What's they're doing on? that we could yeah. share with yeah. the, the rest of the society. And in that two days workshop, it was so heartwarming to hear men express themselves mm -hmm. and to build their dream houses with their family. And to say to us, you know, um, we need support we need to, to form a fatherhood group so that we can support other men. Yeah. Because I think that, as was rightly said before, socialization, culture, and all of this has a lot to do with how we see men yeah. and how we, we act with men. I think that one of the things that we learned from that exercise that, and, and over the years I have learned too, is that sometimes women, mothers, kind of put men in a different uh, box, yeah. you know, and. Um, especially when there's disagreements and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, fathers are cut off from their children. And sometimes it is not because fathers don't want to be in their children's lives, but sometimes they're actually cut out of it. And so they were saying that an opportunity like this would help them to work with other men who are going through different kinds of problems yeah. Yeah. and who want to be with their children and that kind of thing. Um, and so we are definitely going to put our best um, efforts out there as the National Parenting Task Force yeah. to see how we can really and truly bring this to the point where it is recognized, where we, un where we could understand the importance of it. And when I say we, I mean the society as yeah. a whole. How important it is for, for, for that father and child relationship because that is how, be because we do have, as we said earlier, we do have single-headed homes that are headed by yeah. only women. Yeah. And even so, um, it, we, we always want to encourage that the child still has a relationship with the father. Yeah. And that if not, then there's some male person in there who is, who is modeling yeah. and helping the girls and so on. Because that is how people kind of look to their future yeah. husbands or whatever yeah. the case might yeah. be. You know? Yeah, we learn love from our parents. And exactly. Yeah. And so um, 
the, the way we nurture, and, 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 and I think that that is an important part of this whole, this whole process in terms of how we raise our children. Yeah. Because we have to stop rearing our children in the sense that boy, girl, girl, boy, that, that, that does not yeah. work. Because boys have to learn how to nurture, they have to learn mm -hmm. how to hug and love and that kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know. And so we are hoping that through the, the, um, the, the, some of the activities in the parenting guide that we have just recently learned, yeah. um, launched, that we will help people to learn how to play, learn how to, 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 to build bonds that will last. Yeah. And um, we are going to not only work with parents, but we are also going to work with organizations and um, the courts and so on and so forth to help them to help these parents to, yeah. to, to better have, have a greater relationship, relationship with, yeah. with, with, with children. Because families, at the end of the day, the family is one of the most important unit. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. Sometimes there are ups and downs in families. But at the end of the day, it is your family. Yeah. It is your family. It is your family. Yes. And that is why we want to you know, say to people that no matter what, yeah. The family, that bond with your family is so important. You know, and I hear that that's so powerful. And I think mm -hmm. we all have that reflection of our own family and how they provided for our own foundation. But Ms. Nick, I think you're saying one of the most critical things that when you talk about families, you're not talking about the stereotypical mom, dad, daughter, son, dog, and white picket fence. That's not <laughs> what we're working towards. <laughs> yeah. It's involvement by all right, right? and and that's what i'm hearing from you. you you put together a manual on how to parent this is what people have been looking for for years yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> i was okay. gonna say so yes. so what is the impact though let's let's move ahead from from the need to do it what is the difference between whether or not i'm separated from my baby's father or you know, we, we have that stereotypical, you just pay all the bills and I'll do all the parenting for this child. Yeah. What is the difference when you make that shift that all people are involved in, in parenting and raising that child? Well, go ahead. I think the impact <laughs> is really the quality of life for that child. Yeah. And you really start to ensure that we have more productive um, citizens, people yeah. who, I mean, I heard you earlier talking about people who are not afraid to speak out, people yeah. who are comfortable in who they are, people who are able to communicate better. Yeah. I think doing that shift, you will see an impact in the, the, the citizens that we have and the productivity of the community and the society as a whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's giving kids the best start. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we <coughs> we're also doing with the guide, because the guide is out there. Okay. And, um, in June, I think it's in June or somewhere there, we'll be doing an, a, a sort of an assessment. Okay. Because the, the, the guide is out there, but it has a monitoring and evaluation component to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we will be evaluating the trainings to see how they're impacting the society, um, where we need to tweet, what is it that we may need to do differently. Because, you know, nothing is written in stone. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, is, it is really and truly a work in progress. Yeah. yeah. And I am happy that as a chair of the National Parenting Task Force, I have nine wonderful women, one man. We need more men. But um, these are hardworking women, dedicated, committed. Um, and we, I mean, I am just so happy to know that I am a part of these wonderful sets of women and, and men. And, um, it, you know, we say go and everybody is ready. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it is Belize, whether it is Punta Gorda, whatever the case might be. Yeah. And I think what is so warm about all of this is that they're from different ministries. Um, it's the Ministry of Education, it's the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. it's the Ministry of Human Development. And so it adds uh, to the work that we do. And we also work and we um, liaison closer with the the Child Protection Committee, the, yeah. the IEC, et cetera, et cetera. And so we are hoping that through all of these different committees yeah. that we'll be able to impact and, and get this message out yeah. as well and as broadly as possible. Yeah. And in addition to what Ms. Nick said, sometimes when we say there's a, there's a parenting manual or a parenting <laughs> guide, a lot of people may say, why have something that teaches you how to parent? 
Um, one of our, our responses to people is normally that, you know what, not because I born a child or I adopted a child automatically makes me a parent. Yeah. Yeah. If you have somebody in your household, like for me, I have my mother, but you still need certain guidance in terms of how do you go about doing X, Y, and Z. So that's one of the beauty about the parenting guide, as well as it helps um, the different organizations that Ms. Nick made mention of, as well as others who are doing parenting um, training and so forth, for us to be able to bring together the same message. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter at which entry point a parent comes yeah. in, we're all saying the same message, and that, that is one of the main trusts of having the parenting manual as well. Can okay. I ask a question? Is there any thought in moving forward, and I know you're just at the point of getting the guide out and, and kind of spreading it across the country, but in long term, um, is there any thought in getting it to people before they become parents, perhaps at the tertiary level yes. mm -hmm. or the final years of high school, mm -hmm. so that some of this information is already there before they take on the responsibility? Mm -hmm. Most definitely. That discussion has been had amongst mm -hmm. the um, parenting task force in terms of we're looking at the possibility of getting, getting the, the guide actually into the, the um sixth form level or maybe even as far as the high school level yeah. but we know there are certain intricacies that we need to look at yeah. so at first we're just looking at those who are parents already those yes. who are doing the training and then You'll our next that, step will yeah. be there because yeah. we need to we may need to be able to tweak certain things within the guide so that we are able to reach the level of the students that we want to bring the information to. Absolutely. And that would be, and that would be uh, uh, a gracious idea for the fact that, and I, you know, I'm, this might sound funny, and, I'm, you know, and I like the fact that we, could, we are able to discuss it. Children are having children. Oh, that's yeah. right. Children yeah. are having children. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy. No. You know, it's not for a society. It's not for your country. Reason being is because we tend to make Mm -hmm. wrong decisions That's because right. we're not mature enough mm -hmm. yeah. so if we've got the guide then we know exactly how to and people are able to choose these people mm -hmm. that they want to rear a family with because That's they right. know the strength of a man That's or right. the strength of a woman mm -hmm. now to celebrate the day today because it's so dear to me I like it I really <laughs> like it what do we do today to celebrate how do we uh, besides being on the uh, b besides being on here what else are we doing to shove, to shove this across so people can reckon that we're celebrating this International Day of Families? Well, we are hoping that people will be really in tune to the different um, airways mm -hmm. because we have, the, as we said earlier, the chair of the National Committee for Families and Children. Yeah. She'll be addressing the nation to yeah. um, remind the nation that today is celebrated as International Day of the Family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I said, we earlier we are going. We are planning a breakfast meeting for ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the whole purpose of planning that the, the meeting is actually to plan other activities to continue to celebrate um, families, and um, and uh, particularly, like I said, to bring fathers because our our issue is not an issue, but we want to engage our fathers. Yeah. And we want them in yeah. the lives of our children. And I know that other organizations are also plan, have planned activities for this day um, to, to mark the day as well. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, there was a um, Monday and Tuesday, there was an ECD conference, Early Childhood Conference, mm -hmm. which leads right up to the celebration of International um, Day of the Family. So um, we are hoping that out of today, out of today, that we will be able to plan some really um, elaborate activities to continue to celebrate yeah. um, Family Day over the years to come. Mm -hmm. Because I think for some reason we have not been celebrating it as we, yeah. as, as we should be. Yeah. As you know. it should be. So we need to bring it back. And we thought that to come to this registration and other registrations, because we have other parenting task force members on the, on the air as well, yeah. in mm -hmm. other stations, to ensure that the message is spread, ensure that people remember the yeah. day and um, plan activities now by way of work plan yeah. as to how we will celebrate this, making it maybe a week activities leading up to yeah. the family day yeah. so that people could really and truly understand and appreciate yeah. the importance of the day. You know, I think one of the clear messages um, that I would imagine is, is reaching out to families perhaps who are in a state of disunity. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, not everybody gets it right. You know, mm -hmm. we learn along the way um, and, and being able, one, to celebrate those families who are all involved and, and keeping it together 
sometimes I imagine, let's say, you know, someone who's divorced or the, the father's left the picture, they're thinking, oh no, I failed, I don't have a family for my child. How do you reinforce the message of the uniqueness of what a family can be and, and, and the, um, if I reflect on the first conversation, the supportive role we all have in being able to raise good children, productive citizens in the future? Who wants to take that? I one? think yeah. with, with the guide itself, the guide covers, because it's a, it's a document that we don't think 10 years from now it will be the same document. The realities of children now, it has changed over the years and yeah. we expect it to change as well. But um, I know that the guide has touched on some things that we know that every child at some point will experience, whether it's separation, yeah. loss of a family member, um, yeah. looking at different reproductive um, development. Yeah. So uh, the guide does touch on separation and loss yeah. and how you deal with that trauma mm -hmm. and how you support that child. It's not an easy task, of course, yeah. and I know I could understand um, a parent feeling like a failure Mm -hmm. but also how you can turn that around and still be the best parent for that child and still yeah. play that dual role if you have to as yeah. a mother and father and still ensure that the child's needs yeah. are met. And you're still a family. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about this parenting guy, you know, people will be calling and saying, where can I get it? Uh, how do you? Um, <laughs> tell us. Um, the parenting guy right now, as I, as I may mention, right now we have um, distributed it to our different organizations and groups that yeah. do um, parenting training. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's online. It is. Yeah. Okay. It's you. So we could get that through, through yes. NCFC. Yes. 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 Or they yes. could contact the office and find yes. out how to get it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's accessible to anyone. Like anybody can pick it up and see. And it will we help have just you. We have just re, um, produced some more because okay. there's a demand. No. no. So you just produce some that's more. That's a good <laughs> indicator. <laughs> that's <a very> good <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. is why we also put it online yeah. so yeah. that it is yes. accessible yes. now because there is the demand. Because yeah. I think that um, for a long time, I think people were waiting to, for some kind of guide yeah. as, to, as to parenting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the NCFC has been very busy mm -hmm. in terms of trying to, to make inroads in all areas because. Mm. Um, also the whole issue of teenage pregnancy and children having children okay. mm -hmm. yeah. and the whole issue of um, early marriages and child unions um, yeah. because that is another it's still out there. burning yeah. issue yes. and um, the month in the month of June we'll be having several validation sessions to look at a roadmap that we have developed mm -hmm. to see how we could try and curve that problem because that is a major problem yeah. um, because the, the, the surveys have shown that some of these children actually enforce marriages and force yeah. relationships, you know. And um, when we think about families, what kind of families would they be able to? Would they be able to really and truly, you know, yeah. to, to, to really and truly develop oh. and that kind of thing, yeah. if they are being forced into mm -hmm. early marriages and early unions and for for whatever the reasons are, I, I think that um, as a society we have to do better. Yeah. So to, we find to. these things in the manual as well. Yes. We find how to deal with it. That because, is that you know, is also in the manual. One of the things that, that is becoming becoming rampant in our country is actually the, the situation of depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. and, that having, is also and having to yes, mm -hmm. and having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Having children and parents or a parent who is mm -hmm. suffering from that mm -hmm. and the child doesn't know what's going on there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know I, I think these are some of the conversations that has to uh, continue because mm -hmm. mommy and daddy will deal with it totally differently yes. and when there is a scuffle in the home that child doesn't understand and yeah. then it trickles mm -hmm. down that the child becomes uh, uh, with you Martin. know with yes yeah. mm -hmm. so do we do we do we find how to deal with this in these uh, and, and I'm glad I gl I'm glad you realized because we were listening a while ago to the issues with the children yeah. in school. yes yes yeah. and um, the the uh, the guide does speak to those kinds of things because what the guide is very extensive and yeah. we'll definitely get a copy to you but um, children are so sometimes emotionally and psychologically and whatever disconnected yeah. um, just because of the, the trauma that they're living through. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they go to school, sometimes they have some abnormal behaviors that as teachers, we cannot cope with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and while the teacher is not a psychologist or a counselor, whatever the case might be, one must be cognizant of the fact that something is wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, I listened and I was glad to hear you say, Marlene, that whipping is not the, 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 the one and only way because yeah. um, if, and I think that Ms. Flores or somebody said it, when you go into a classroom, mm -hmm. you are in charge of a classroom. However, you don't have to go in there as all, you know, whatever yeah. the case might be, but you have to get to know your students. Mm -hmm. You have to get to know their surroundings. And you will always have parents who will be that parent out there because that parent was also a victim. Yeah. Yes. So it is a cycle, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So, and if you talk to some parents, they will say, well, I am fine. They are not fine at all. Mm -hmm. But in their mind, they are fine, they are fine. because they, are, they have survived mm -hmm. whatever the crisis was that they lived through. Yes. Yeah. And so these children are living through that as well. And so it, it is a difficult time, I know, for, um, for teachers, for parents, for all of us. Yeah. Because, I mean, we walk the streets every day and we see things that are happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we see young children out at the, I mean, in the nice. I mean, it's really and truly a trying time yeah. mm -hmm. for us in this um, country as we try to move forward. But mm -hmm. um, Can I ask a question there? Because what you're saying just, just rings home. I think it ties the two messages together. Mm -hmm. Society looks on and says, oh, look where our country is going. And mm -hmm. we don't realize that these are cycles upon cycles that mm -hmm. are manifesting. Yeah. Um, but we want to see a change and we don't always recognize we have a role to play. Exactly. We always say going back to the concept of it takes a village to raise a child. Exactly. Now that means something different from it did 30 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. In today's world, how can the village help to support whether it's families or directly children what do you think can be the role that we all the complainers especially the computer <laughs> complainers uh, do or change or contribute towards making family life better or a child's life better I think it's really just individuals tapping into structures that are already there yeah. um, it's not for the lack of policies or the lack of activities or um, resources that we have. The Belize Family Life Association has a lot of resources. We have services geared towards family to young people to really look at the prevention of early pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. We give information in terms of gender-based violence and um, prevention of STIs and all of that. Um, the National um, Committee for Families and Children, they have the parenting guide, they have all the other policies in place to protect children. I know early childhood, they're doing a lot in terms of schools yeah. and engaging the young people, but really we need, it's more than what the organizations can do. It's really now looking at what community leaders can do and partnering with the same organizations. And we have, we have in our, our, in our so not our society, but in, in, our, in our field, we have a lack of human resources. So we are always looking for volunteers looking for people to help us mobilize and bring out the same information that we would to a smaller group to the larger community yeah. and um, the same way that we could spread negativity on Facebook we can spread the same good, good information news, and yes. things that everybody can benefit from so it really takes the individual effort yeah. those who are interested to just reach out and we're always looking for yeah. help because fundamentally at the end of the day we're all part of one large family yes, yes. yes. exactly yeah. and, and we it, all want to be a productive family definitely yeah. and if you look at it in terms of an educational um direction we hear we hear teachers or we hear principals complaining that children are misbehaving children are rude one of the things as a teacher or as, as an individual who is responsible for a larger group you have to be able to look at people as individuals yes. yeah what is try to find out what is the the cause what is the bottom line of yeah. you misbehaving as opposed to just labeling a child and saying you know what you're rude you don't deserve to be in this class xyz yeah. because um if i could use the example from this morning when you are within a classroom that is your family right there that's another family setting that's another family, indeed. so that individual each child needs to know that you know what i am a part of this family mm -hmm. yeah. they need to be able to feel that love as teachers we and i say we because i'm still a teacher yeah. we have to be able to understand you know what marlene act this way because of x y and z mm -hmm. yeah. this is what i need to do for marlene we cannot generalize and say you know what we have a class of 32 we're going to treat all 32 the same yeah. Yeah. it will never work yeah. and for some reason when i used to teach my principal used to look at people and say you know what you you and you you're going to miss gamboa because miss gamboa was trick but miss gamboa was one of the loving teachers mm -hmm. so i had Majority of my class would be male. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it would be males who teachers would tell you from their coming, you know what? Yeah. Tighten up. Yeah. Yes. And you just erase all those preconceptions. Because I it's hope. how you treat people. When people feel love yeah. and people know that you love them, you get it back they in return. The yes. You get all it back right. in return. Uh, all right. I think I think <laughs> also um the you know we have also launched a children's agenda. Mm -hmm. And one of the transformational goals of the children's agenda is that of supportive parents. I think that um, parents, wherever they are, because mm -hmm. maybe the outreach has to be a little bit more. Because I think parents, wherever they are, need support. Because parents really and truly need support. Yeah. Because parents go through quite a bit. Of yeah. course. And there is not the mechanism in place to help them, to support them. Yeah. And like I said earlier, if they think they have survived and they're okay, then they're okay. And so they, then their children are okay. But we know that they're not okay. And we also know that the family is one of the largest organizations of any society. And if our families are not okay, then that speaks to how yeah. our society is. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Well, thank you for bringing in this reflection today. I think uh, you hit the nail on the head in, in how pivotal uh, families are to all of us mm -hmm. and how collectively we're all part of a family as well so mm -hmm. it's a day that we celebrate those who we were blessed to have in our life as as our family mm -hmm. and we appreciate you coming in and giving us that reminder all right thank, thank you for having us thank you. we're gonna go ahead and take a break the show's not over yet we have one more conversation and it's about an upcoming art exhibit and concerts so stay tuned